Hello, River of Life and Greenwood Family Church. Thank you for stopping by and being with us this service. We are so excited. Happy New Year from River of Life from Pastor Randy and Gina, my husband and I. We just want to extend Happy New Year's to you. We pray blessings upon you this year. Amen. We're just so excited to see what God has in store for us, for the redemption, for the salvations. Amen. For reconciliation that he has in mind for us and our church. Amen. We are excited to see God's hand move over the lives that um, he is called back. Amen. That he is calling back to himself. And so we just thank you once again for being a part of this and being a part of this journey. Nobody saw this coming, virtual platform church, but we're just so grateful. Amen. We're so grateful that you've been able to stick around with the journey with us. And we just come before the Lord with expectant hearts for this year. Uh, you know, regardless of what it looks like, regardless of things that may come, we know that God is in control. He sits on the throne. Amen. And so we just believe full of confidence and full of hope. Amen. For the things that he has, not just for us as individuals, but in our marriage, in our home. Amen. Um, in our cities, in our communities, wherever you're at. Amen. We just pray that God would just have his way, his perfect will done in your life. Amen. That he would continue to use you this year as a vessel, as a beacon of light to reach the lost. Amen. To reach the lost. And that's what we're here for, to reach out for those souls that need him. Amen. And so we just, uh, we're just looking forward so much for this year. We know that he has amazing things in store for us. Amen, church. Before we get started, I do want to give you some announcements for the month of January. We're really excited for this new year, like I mentioned. We do have our ministries available to everybody and anybody. Our youth and young adult ministry connected. Youth is still going strong. You can find us on Instagram, um, as well as we use a Zoom platform. Um, just to gather together different days of the week. Uh, reach out to us if you're, if you're interested in that ministry down below. And we'll definitely give you that information. We have our kids are cool. We are just super pumped to be able to pour in to our little ones every Sunday. It's through this channel on this platform, YouTube, and you could see that posted every Sunday at 11 o'clock, and that's for your little ones to be blessed. Amen. Uh, we have some few things going on this month, uh, one of which is our men's discipleship. Uh, the men are getting together on January 23rd. January 23rd at 10 a.m. on Zoom. Um, it's a great time for the men just to gather together to encourage one another, uplift one another, hear what's going on in each other's heart. A amen. And just really be that pillar for one another in that time. Uh, for the women, we do have our... Um, bow fellowship going on january 30th also at 10 a.m also on zoom we just look forward to gaining uh getting together with you ladies and just fellowship fellowshipping encouraging one another being there for one another uplifting one another it's a blessed time amen so with that i just pray that you would just join all the things that apply to you amen um we just love we love hearing uh, back from you whether it's through this platform through text um through the time we get together on zoom we love to gather together amen even though we can't do it physically we love that we could use these platforms to do that we love you be blessed Saints, it is time to bless the Lord. Thank you so much. Once again, we say it every month, but I never get tired of it because we sincerely mean it. Thank you so much for just pouring into this ministry for your generosity, for your obedience above all things, you know, giving unto the Lord as we are called to do. And so we just thank you. Thank you for just believing in this church, believing in this ministry and the vision that God has placed inside our hearts to follow through through this uh, in this ministry. Amen. So we just thank you once again. If it's your first time, welcome. And if you would like to go ahead and partner with us in any way, um, there are three ways that you can give to the ministry. Amen. The first of which is Cash App. That's a ROL CCSGV. Uh, the second way is Venmo. And you could send that to River of Life Christian Church. And then the third way is Zelle, and you can send that to ROLCCSGV at yahoo.com. Either way we give, we receive it, and we just want to say thank you so much once again for your generosity, just believing in this ministry, backing us up in prayer, uh, sowing seed, amen, into this ministry. We just want to thank you. We so appreciate it, and we're humbled by it. Good morning, church. Good morning, River of Life. Good morning, Greenwood. Uh, we are so happy for you to join us again this beautiful Sunday morning. 
Uh, I pray that the Spirit of God is with you. I pray that, pray the Spirit of God is upon you. I pray that He is in your home. Um, I just want to uh, take a few minutes again today uh, to bring the word to you. Uh, thank you so much to everyone who's been praying. Thank you to everyone who's uh, been fasting. I pray that the Spirit of God has been moving in your life. Uh, I know that God is doing some big things, some amazing things uh, in this new year. Um, I just want to open up in uh, in a word of prayer this morning, and uh, I pray that the Spirit of God would just uh, be with you as, as we begin today. Amen. Uh, Heavenly Father, right now we just come before you, Lord. We thank you for this, mo this morning, Lord God. We thank you for this time that we have to gather in your presence, Lord God. I pray that even right now you would begin to soften our hearts, Lord God, and open our minds, Father, that your spirit may touch us, Father, and may bring revelation, Lord God. Challenge us, Lord God. Convict us with your word, Lord God, that we may live a life worthy and pleasing to you, Father, a righteous life, Lord God, a, a holy life, Father, a life that is set apart for your glory, for your kingdom, Lord God. Father, right now, I pray that this, this series that we're in right now, Father, would just begin, Lord, to challenge us, that it would begin to uh, speak to us, Lord God, that it wouldn't just fall, Father, on deaf ears, Lord God, but it would be received, Lord God, on, in good ground. We just love you, Lord God. Take root in our heart, Lord God, and bring forth, Lord God, good fruit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Church, we're going to go ahead and continue our series this morning. Um, we want to continue the series on uh, prepare, position, and promise. Uh, we are, I believe, on week three uh, of this series. Um, I feel like the Spirit of God has been speaking to a lot of people during this series. Um, and I pray that it just continues. I pray that this would set the, the, the stage, if you will, uh, for the upcoming year, that we would uh, be ready, we'd be, we'd be prepared to receive the blessing and the promises of God in, a, in our lives, in our families. Um, so in part one, we talked about the promise being given to God, the prom or the promise being given by God. He gave it to Joshua and the uh, the Israelites. The promise was given to Joshua and the Israelites. They were told to be strong and courageous. Strong and courageous. Now I know sometimes that uh, on the road to the promise, it is tough and it is filled with questions and it's filled with uncertainties. But the Spirit of God has warned us to be strong and courageous. We see good prepare, uh, God preparing his people for a long and trying road, but leading them to his promise. And I think that's the big thing that we need to, to take this morning, is regardless of where our road is taking us, he is still leading us to his promise. Amen. They were told that no one or nothing will be able to stand against them. When we give our lives to God, we give a, He gives us authority over anything that may try to hinder us from receiving His promise. And He, he always tells us to keep His words on our lips. To continue to speak His word over our life. He says, if we can do that, if we can be strong and, and courageous, if we can keep his word on our lips, keep it in our heart, keep it in our mind, speak it over our lives and over our family, over ourselves, then you will be prosperous and successful, the word of God says in Joshua chapter 1. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And then we went to part two, the preparation. We talked about how the preparation is vital to the success of anything, including the promises of God. God will not release his promise until we are prepared to receive them. And we also talked about how God's timing was perfect in all things. Amen. So this morning, I want to continue this series. And this morning, in part three, we are going to be talking about positioning ourselves to receive the promises of God. 
Now, it's one thing to, 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 to hear and, and, and be promised something. It's another thing to prepare for it. But it's another thing. It's a step closer when you actually position yourself to receive it. Because now you're taking the steps of faith is what we're going to be talking about this morning. Taking steps of faith to put yourself in the parameter of the blessing. Of the promise. So if you have your Bibles this morning, we're going to be in Joshua chapter 4 and Joshua chapter 5. And again, we're not going to be reading the whole chapters, but we're going to be touching on some pieces here and there. So in Joshua chapter 4, verse 1 through 3, it says, When the whole nation had finished crossing the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, Choose twelve men from among the people. One from each tribe, and tell them to take up twelve stones from the middle of, Jordan, of the Jordan, from right where the priests are standing, and carry them over with you, and put them down at the place where you stay tonight. Preparation with our faith to position ourselves, right? We need to prepare ourselves and take steps of faith to position ourselves to where God has called us to be. We cannot get stuck in the preparation stage. We see that after the initial preparation Joshua had commanded to, st uh, to stand and move, right? That we had, to, we had to position ourselves, right? We have to move. We have to, we have to be able to take steps of faith with the information that he had. The, the initial preparation that he had, that he, that he received, the, the, the intel that he received prompted him to move into position. He didn't wait to get the whole picture. He knew that in order to, to receive the promises of God, he was going to have, take, have to take steps of faith. And in these scriptures, it's literal steps of faith. We see in verse 1, when the whole nation had finished crossing the Jordan, they had to go from one place to another. Not just uh, uh, spiritually, not just emotionally, not just mentally, but physically, they had to get up and move. Some of us have been waiting for the, for, for the promise to come to us when we are supposed to be chasing that promise. We are supposed to be taking strides toward that promise. Literal steps. They had to cross the Jordan. And here's something that you, 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 you may not have realized. Just in, in a couple books back, in Exodus, God splits the Red Sea, right? He split the Red Sea for Moses so that they could, uh, the Israelites could, could leave Egypt or escape from Egypt. That was to escape Egypt, to get away from something. But now we see in, 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 in Joshua chapter 4 that he doesn't just split the Red Sea so that he could so that the people could get away, but he splits another body of water, the Jordan, right? He splits it so that his people could get to somewhere. You see, so many of us want to think that that the Red Sea was a miracle and that it was just so that people could escape, and that's all and that's all where it, that's where it ended. But the Spirit of God is so good because He can use the same technique that He's used in the past to take us to our promise. The key, the key is to not get stuck in the preparation. Not get stuck in that preparation phase, thinking I'm always just going to prepare and prepare and prepare and wait for the Spirit of God to come to me and prepare and prepare and wait for the promise to come to me and prepare and prepare and wait and wait and wait. We need to begin to start positioning 
ourselves. It's so important that we don't get stuck in the preparation, but never stop preparing. And I'm going to make that a little more clear in a second. See, while, while they were moving, they were continuing to prepare. When they were crossing the Jordan, they were continuing to prepare. Look what it says in verse 3. It says, take up 12 stones from the Jordan. And it says, right, or from right where the priests were standing. Even while they were starting to get into position, even though they had prepared, and they were now on the move, they did not stop preparing. It says, even while they were, uh, well, they were, they were crossing, they were preparing, they were picking up rocks that were commanded by God. We are still preparing for the promise. In the, in, in the New King James translation, it says, where the priests, it says they took up the stones where the priests' feet stood firm in the Jordan. See, the priests were holding the Ark of the Covenant. And they were standing in the Jordan as people were crossing. We may not always understand the past or the path that, that God has put us on. These priests were holding the Ark. They were holding it and, and waiting for the Israelites to cross. Instead of continuing to cross... It says that, that, that Joshua commanded, was commanded to take 12 stones and take them across to the other side where the priests stood firm. We can rest assured that the path he leads us down will always be secure. It may not be easy. It may be rough and it may be rocky. It may, it may hurt. It may challenge us. We may have to leave some things behind in order to make that crossing. But rest assured that the path he leads us down will always be secure. In Joshua chapter, 10, uh, chapter 4, verse 10 and 11, it says, Now the priests who carried the ark remained standing in the middle of the Jordan until everything the Lord had commanded Joshua was done by the people. Just as Moses had directed Joshua, the people hurried over. And as soon as all of them had crossed the ark of the Lord and the priests came to the other side while the people watched. The ark remained in the middle of the Jordan until everything was ready, the word says. Until everything was ready. Until the people had prepared and positioned themselves correctly. And it says that the people hurried over. They didn't linger. They didn't wait. They didn't waste time. We cannot think God will wait for our timing. We need to be about our Father's business if we want to see the promise come to pass in our life. We cannot allow time to pass by. We need to know that God is ready to move in our lives and we need to position ourselves and our lives to receive. That's what the Israelites were doing. After they had left the wilderness... And God promised them the land of milk and honey. They began to prepare. And they began to position themselves. That's what we must do in order to see the Spirit of God move in our lives. We need to not only prepare, but we need to position ourselves. In Joshua chapter 5, verse 8 through 12, it says, 
And after the whole nation had been circumcised, they remained where they were in, in camp until they were healed. Verse 9 says, Then the Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. So the place has been called Gilgal to this day. On the evening of the fourth day of the month, while camped in, at Gilgal, on the plains of Jericho, the Israelites celebrated the Passover. The day after the Passover, that, that very day, they ate some of the produce of the land. Unleavened bread and roasted grain. Watch this in verse 12. The manna stopped that day after they ate this food from the land. There was no longer any manna for the Israelites, but that year they ate the produce of Canaan. Once the people had prepared and positioned themselves, God began to release his promises. He promised them the land of milk and honey. He started to give them the land. Once God sees we are ready, church, once he has seen our preparation, once he has seen us get into position according to his plan, his purpose, and his path, the road that he leads us on, he will begin to release. It may not happen all at once, but the, re the release will begin. It says in verse 12 that the manna stopped. The manna was just for them to not go hungry. The promise was not that they would just survive. They were going to they weren't not they were not just going to to just have the bare minimum. He promised the land, the milk and honey. Everywhere their feet walked would be theirs. That was the promise. They knew that it wasn't just the, the, the bare minimum that God said I would give you. But he said I am going to give you everything that your heart de desires. I see your need. And I'm going to go above and beyond. Everywhere your foot goes you will receive. And verse 15 says, the commander of the Lord's army replied. So, they crossed the Jordan. They prepared. Everyone healed up. They, 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 they were ready to keep moving. It says, as they approached Jericho, as they approached Jericho, a man stood with his sword drawn. So Joshua walked up to him and said, are you our ally or are you our enemy? He says, I am neither. He says, I am the commander of the Lord's army. And this is where we pick up in verse 15. It says, the commander of the Lord's army replied, take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. After the promise was given, after the preparation was made, and after the positioning was taken, they found themselves in a position or a place of holiness. A place where God could deliver His promises. What we need to understand is to get to the promise, it's not just to prepare or to position or to receive. I'm going to give you another P word right now. Process. It's a process. There is a process to getting to the promise. The road to the promise may not come overnight, church. It may require you to take inventory of your heart, your mind, your body, and spirit. It may require you to take steps of faith. It may require you to be strong and courageous. It may require you to learn the word of God and let it live in your heart and flow out of your lips. And to remind yourself day and night who he is. But rest assured that the promise is worth the promise the process rest assured that the promise is worth 
the process. Whether the process is short or long, whether the promise is, 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 is big or small, the process to get there, to receive, the preparation it took, the, the heartache and the frustration and the trials and tribulations and the victory and the overcomings and the authority that was given, the entire process, the ups and downs, the highs, the lows, the mountaintops, the valleys, it doesn't matter. The process, rest assured, will always be worth the promise. But will his children be diligent? When things don't go our way, when life gets turned upside down, when uncertainty strikes, when the process takes you into a rough place, Will your eyes be fixed on the promise? Will you be able to continue to take steps of faith? There's so much more to the process than just receiving the or, or hearing and being spoken over by God saying, I will give you this and actually getting to the place to receive. There's a journey that needs to take place. There is a process that needs to take place because the process is not just a physical process. It's an emotional process. It's a spiritual process. We learned that, that all of the, 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 the warriors, the generation that, that came out of Egypt never saw the, pro, the, the promised land because God had to weed out God had to, 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 to get rid of that old mindset so that the, the, the new mindset, the new generation would be able to see the promises of God. Do you know why God commanded Joshua to take the 12 stones from the Jordan? He, he said to take those 12 stones and to place them on the other side of the Jordan. So that generations to come would remember what God had done in their life during the process. What has God done in your process? What process are you in right now? Are you in a preparation stage? Are you in a positioning stage? Are you in the very beginning of hearing the word of God, hearing the promises of God, and saying, that is where I desire to be? It's time we start to accept the process and begin to prepare our hearts, bodies, mind, and spirit. And it's time we start to take steps of faith and get ourselves into a position of holiness. Because then when we find ourselves in a place of holiness, we will begin to see the promises of God be fulfilled in our lives. Church, this series that God has given me, I believe can change the very outcome of this year. Expect God to do big things. Expect Him to, 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 be, to fulfill the promises over your life. But it takes a process. It takes work on our part. It takes us preparing and positioning ourselves. Church, I pray you are blessed this Sunday morning. Next week, we will be concluding our series, part four of receiving the promise. I pray that you join us again. I pray that the Spirit of God would lead you back here to finish this series. 
Guys, I pray you are blessed. Father, anoint your people, bless your people, prepare your people, uh, and, and position your people for the promises, Lord God. Give them strength during the process, Lord. Give them faith the size of a mustard seed. Split every sea, split every river, any obstacle that may seem unmovable. Show them that you are God, Lord in this process to the promise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless, church. Church, thank you so much. We pray that service blessed your heart, amen. We just you pray that God used it to speak to you, to touch you, to challenge you, to stir you, to awaken something inside of you, amen. So we just pray that you would just receive fully that word and that message. Um, we just want to encourage you some few things. If it's your first time joining us and you're wanting to stick around, welcome to the River of Life family. Jump on in because the water's fine. Um, that's what we like to say here at our church. And so there's a few ways you could actually do that. Amen. And you could, one of which is subscribing uh, to the channel. Another thing is liking our video, letting us know down below with comments um, how God spoke to you in this word. Amen. And then another thing is hitting that notification, that little bell button. Amen. Um, just so you get notified as to when we upload things, not just in this channel, but also for our kids, our cool ministry so that your little ones also get spiritually fed. Amen. So either way, we just thank you so much for drop, dropping by and joining us um, this service. Thank you for your fellowship and thank you for just being here a part of this ministry and this vision. We just pray blessings upon you. We love you. We miss you terribly. And until we meet again, thank you, church.